Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Guys, I want to share with you another, yes, another pair of cowboy boots. Uh, so today, I want to share with you guys another pair of roper boots. Uh, let me just turn on my fan here. It's getting a little hot in here. Um, so, all right, so you guys know I'm a huge collector of watches, cologne, boots, you know, leather jackets. I'm pretty obsessive uh, when it comes to the things that I like, right? So generally, um, I just can't buy one of anything. It always uh, leads to seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times there's really no limit. There's always, uh, you know, something I want to get. You know, I, a lot of times I don't mention that I collect jeans because a lot of people, uh, you know, do acquire a lot of clothes over the years if you are, I guess, fashion conscious. Um, you know, everybody's different. Not everybody. Some people have a few pair of jeans and they wear them to, wear them till they wear out, and that's the end of it. And they buy a new pair. But for me, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm always looking for new jeans. So uh, I don't know. I must have hundreds of pairs of jeans, but I never uh, really, you know, talk about them being a collection because I guess those are more of like. I almost kind of consider clothing more like a uniform, you know. I think a lot of people have uh, a wardrobe, you know. I mean, I think that even people who aren't really obsessive and collect things uh, generally have, you know, a decent amount of clothes in their in their lineup, depending on, you know, your personality and stuff like that. But usually, uh, all the years I've, you know, have different shirts and different pants and that kind of stuff, clothing, um, I haven't really ever considered it a kind of a collection because they just get worn so much. Now, I've uh, donated a lot of clothes uh, over the years, uh, sold some on eBay, a lot of my older, um, late 90s, kind of baggier, board leg style pants. And at this point in my life, I don't see me ever really going back to that style. Uh, I like things a lot more fitted now. Uh, so I kind of gravitate between like straight legs, slim jeans, and of course, uh, you know, skinny jeans sometimes. Well, to me, nothing looks cooler than a cool, fresh pair of cowboy boots. Um, and they don't always have to be traditional cowboy boots. A lot of times they can be ankle boots. Um, you know, my collection of boots is up to about, I think, 20 pairs of, of ankle slash cowboy boots. And, you know, with things with shoes, generally, when you have a big collection of them, um, a lot of times these do get worn as well. It's not like something that just kind of gets put on a shelf and displayed. It is something that gets used. So they do wear out in time. Nice thing about a good quality cowboy boot is that you can go and take it to a, a uh, I believe it's called a, I always want to say farrier, a cobbler, I, I believe that's the name, and have him actually put on new soles. Now, I don't know what that costs. We have a place here locally that does that. Um, it's been years since I've gone in there, but um, hopefully with the amount of boots that I do have, I can rotate them enough that uh, it'll be years and years before I ever have to get them replaced. And ultimately, you know, there's always new pairs coming out. I'm always finding great deals on eBay. So having a nice big collection really allows me to rotate those boots. Um, I generally won't wear my cowboy boots or boots that are part of what I consider my collection, right? Um... I don't know why I put that in quotes, but, um, you know, a collection sometimes, I guess to me, some of the collection is just something that you, it doesn't get used. You know, my stuff does get used, so it's, uh, you know, they are going to wear out eventually, you know. Uh, it's not like a watch where a watch generally will last you a lifetime. You know, it may break, you may, you know, have to get it fixed, but uh, it is indefinite that, that shoes do wear out. We use them just like tires on a car, right? So uh, the pair I bought today, and getting to the point, is another pair of ropers. So um, I said to myself, I'm not going to spend any more money on... Uh, on boots because I've been getting a lot of really great deals on eBay for used and pre-owned stuff. But I've been eyeballing the Roper Men's Moto Eagle Western boot that's directly from the Amazon listing. Um, but it's called their Moto Eagle. And this is the shoe or the boot right here. So uh, really cool. It's got what I believe is called a, hon a honcho strap. I think honcho 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 um, it does have the strap my favorite pair of boots that I had when I first got my pair was a set of uh, Durango's and they called their Durango I think it was called their Durango honcho and it had the chain and the leather around here and it just gives a really cool look it had the toe caps um, what I like about the Roper boots and not all Roper boots but this particular model and they make this in several different colors in several different styles it's not gonna be the Moto Eagle available in black brown or, or gray right it's gonna be different they're gonna name it differently but it is essentially the same shoe but what I really like about this is you have a really nice heel I'd say it's about an inch and a half heel um, I don't remember exactly what kind of heel this is called I should just call this more traditional but they, you can obviously see it has a very aggressive tread. So this has got more of a work boot tread, which is really great. Um, and, you know, weather starts to get poor. I'll tell you, you know, wearing cowboy boots in, in slippery weather, they just don't work. It's like a hockey puck on ice. You just slide all over the place. So this gives you some traction. Um, I will tell you that as far as the tread on these, um, it's nowhere near as thick as, say, uh, your traditional um, work boot. It is almost, it almost looks like a work boot that has been worn quite a bit. Um, I don't know how long this will last. I don't know if a, if a cobbler could actually put 
a new work boot tread on this. Definitely a piece of rubber, but it's really nice to have that aggressive tread. Um, again, I don't know how long these will last, but time will ultimately tell. Um, it is made of a full full leather, um, and right off, right off the Amazon listing, 100% leather. It's imported. It's made in Mexico, to the best of my knowledge. The boot opening measures 14 inches around. That's at the top. Pretty standard. Um, and then, of course, you have a flexible sole, breathable uh, interior lining, which... You know, when it comes to leather, you know, leather is only so breathable. Uh, but I always find that cowboy boots, I mean, again, they just don't. It's not like wearing a faux pair of, you know, ankle boots. And I have some of those as well, where your feet sweat and all that sweat just stays there. There is an element of uh, breathability, if that's the right word for it. Um, I never feel like my feet stink. I know it's kind of gross, but there's natural uh, antimicrobial properties uh, with leather. And uh, they just always have just a great odor. I can tell you, the Roper boots have an amazing smelling leather. When I get a fresh pair of these compared to any other brand that I have, um, seriously, I'll put these in my bedroom, take them off for the night, and as I walk by the room later on, I can actually smell the leather. It smells like an old western saddle shop. So pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to shove my head in here and take a big whiff, even though I want to, but I'm not going to. Um, I can smell it from here. Really nice quality leather, although I will tell you that with these, my only concern is that kind of around the sides here, and let me get the other one here, and you kind of see right, well... Well, you're probably not going to be able to see by the video, but right around the inside here, I did see a little bit of flaking. And I don't know if this exterior layer to get like kind of this distressed, shiny look is something that's going to peel off in time. If this is like kind of like some sort of bonding on top there. Time will tell. I like them enough to take the risk and see what happens, but um, we'll see. You know, when it comes to distressed boots like this, though, they're made to look like they're old. So we'll see if that actually adds to the look. Um, a little deceiving on the picture. When you look at these on the Amazon listing, and again, link is in the description where you can check these out, um, they look completely black. But when you get them, and it might just be the pair that I got, maybe they're all a little bit different, uh, but it definitely has a much lighter, washed out appearance. And that's not just on one, obviously, it's on. Uh, on both of these. So from the camera, what even just from what you can see right here, you can see it's a lot more washed out uh, than when you click the link in the description and take a look at the pictures. Um, super comfortable, uh, again with Roper boots uh, and a lot of cowboy boots. Um, you would think that sizing would be would be consistent per brand. It's not. I have Ropers in seven and a half in the exact same shoe um, in a kind of a brown distressed, which I've done a review on already. Really cool. Um, Super tight, super hard to get on. Uh, definitely perfect fit as far as a seven and a half, in my opinion, but uh, very difficult to squeeze past your ankle. And it is the same, essentially the same boot. These really easy to slip on, but I had to put an insole in these, and these are actually seven wides. So the wide might have a little bit of an issue on that. Not really sure. I'm not a wide, but I got the wide because when it comes to shoe sizing, there's not a huge difference. Um, in, in the way that these fit. You know, the difference, uh, and I don't remember what it is offhand, but the difference between a 7 and a 7.5, and it's pretty small. So I've, I often say if you wear a 7, you can probably, depending on brand, wear a 7 to 8.5, again, depending on brand. Some of the other boots I have by other companies like Laredo, I have 7.5s, and, and really I probably, probably could have went down to a 6.5 because they're so long and the, just the way they fit. So really, unfortunately, uh, brands, just like, you know, it, it's, it's worse with boots, in my opinion, as far as the fit. Uh, there is no consistency. And again, across brand, you would think it would be the same. Uh, these are seven wides with an insole. They fit great. A little tiny bit loose, but not bad. My seven and a half, different color, super tight. You cannot put an insole in those things. And of course, the sidewinders, I just did a review on. Um, these are um, definitely perfect fit. But uh, you cannot put a insole in these, what, otherwise they'd be too tight. So, uh, and these are regular D width. So the width might have something to do with that. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit wider. But the cool thing about boots is that what I found, as long as they're not too tight and they're not uncomfortable, which I have some that are seven and a half that are, I mean, they squeeze the hell out of your toes. Um, but they stretch out, and leather does stretch a little bit. So usually, what I find is when you wear these for about an hour half hour to an hour, uh, any brand boot that's leather, they will stretch out and, and start to get more comfortable. You can also get boot stretchers. It just kind of depends. If you're buying something new, uh, you know, it's always nice to be able to try it on. But in today's day and age of the internet, uh, very difficult to do that. Cool thing about Amazon Prime uh, with their Amazon wardrobe, the Prime Try Before You Buy. This is how I bought these, unfortunately, uh, because I was like, I'm not buying any more boots, but I just want to try them and see what they look like. Naturally, you know, two pairs of jeans, uh, just got to see what they look like. And then the boots, you put them on, and you're like, ah, got to get it, you know. So 
uh, there goes 300 bucks. So uh, anyway, um, these are incredible boots, so that's why I decided to keep them. And let's see, right? You can kind of maybe see this. See right here? Yeah, I just kind of noticed it. Right here, you can see kind of that peeling. And it seems like it's the outer layer starting to peel a little bit. Now, that might just be back, you know, around where the, the sole meets the boot. And maybe it just kind of didn't, you know, it's kind of like an overhang. Not really sure. I just hope it doesn't get worse and start to look like crap. Uh, but time will tell. And you guys know I always come back and re-review products. Um, I, I baby my stuff. I take care of everything that I own and I spend my money on. Um, if there is any issue, I definitely, definitely, definitely come back and I come after the company hard. Uh, if a company's going to charge... You know, some of these sizes are like 250 for a pair. Uh, now, I got the, these on special, and I'll tell you that in a second. But, um, you know, if a company's going to charge this much money, and I know guys will argue, you know, we have boot snobs in, the, in, this, in, this, in this, you know, the whole boot collecting thing as well. Um, there's, you know, there is boots and there's boots, right? There's going to be super high-end boots, 1000 bucks. that you're going to get exceptional quality. Yeah, boots like this will still give you exceptional quality, but, you know, maybe not as good. It just, you know, it depends. When you're looking at stuff that's like, I'd say, mainstream brands, uh, in that, you know, hundred dollar to two hundred, three hundred dollar price range, the kid, I think the quality is pretty much the same across the board, uh, which is all good. Don't get me wrong. You know, um, I don't, I don't foresee me really having any issues. Um, uh, so what about the styling? Um, again, these are called the Moto Eagle. They are kind of a hybrid like motorcycle riding boot slash cowboy boot. Uh, a little bit different look than your traditional cowboy boot, you know, and there's all different kinds of toes and heels. Um, I tend to gravitate more towards a pointy toe, but not super elongated, uh, which is interesting because you would, you know, with a size seven and a half, you can get away with um, a more of a, a elongated, what I call like a Mexican style toe, um, without it looking like clown shoes, right? And that is subjective. I've seen some dudes who are taller on Instagram rocking boots, so the Sendra boots and other, other brands with pretty long toes and they have pretty large feet. And I was like, wow, that actually looks really good. So it just really depends on the person and your own personal taste. But I do like that they do kind of a pointed squared toe on this. It's kind of unique to Roper. I'm sure other companies do it. I know you guys got to come back and tell me, no, you're not right. I, from the ones I've seen, uh, this is kind of a unique toe. It's, uh, again, it's square, but it's it's pointed. Um, I like the strap on here as well. The only downside I'll say with this is that when they made this, they just made this a little bit too loose. And again, this is where the inconsistency comes. Um, I guess I could swap it out, but I'm just going to live with it. Um, the problem with this is on uh, one of these, I actually... This the one? No, this the one. This is the. This is the. No, so this is the one I actually added a hole, and you can remove these. These are designed to slip completely off the boot without unscrewing kind of the screw rivet. I took the screw rivet apart and I melted uh, with a hot nail through the leather another hole to try to bring this strap up higher. Um, on the other one, which you'll, this one hasn't been done yet, you can see it hangs down really low. Now, when you're wearing these, this tends to slip down a little more. So this leather part is going to start to drag on the ground and wear out. Um, you know, it's you know I will raise this one up as well. It would be nice if you could actually undo the the uh, screwed rivet on both sides. But one side is a screw rivet, the other side is just a standard rivet. You can't take it apart unless you go to like a shoe guy. He could probably do that. But I'm not going to spend the money and time to do that. What I'll do is I'll just raise this up a little bit on this side. That'll help to get it off the ground. Try not to wear them in the rainy, crummy weather. But when this does wear out, um, the cool thing about it is you can just go get like a biker chain, like your wallet chain, and it's. Kind of a traditional style that have chains around here as well. You can take it completely off too if you if you didn't like it. Just have the upper the upper kind of uh, part of the the concho I think it's or honcho strap. I think it's what it's called. Um, you can just have the upper part. But what I'll probably do is when this does wear out and maybe even sooner, I'll just get a biker chain and just and you can go get chain from anywhere really and just wrap it right around here and and attach it right to the um, the eyelet. So uh, that'll give it kind of in my opinion even a cooler look and it'll be a lot more durable but not a big deal at all uh, pretty awesome shoes so let's go ahead and throw it on the on the feet uh, and we'll see what it looks like so I'm wearing a pair of uh, like I do any of these videos I like to tell you guys my you know my size uh, let me just go ahead and swear man this is this, this track right today um, so I like to tell you the size again I have a size seven and a half these are seven and a half uh, wides uh, I'm about five foot seven and a half, and uh, I weigh about 176 pounds as of today. I'm wearing a pair of Rock and Republic, uh, my new favorite brand jean. Pretty affordable. These I got ripped off a little bit on. Normally you get them for about 27 bucks a pair on Amazon. Uh, these they're probably the more popular color. They were 37. Uh, my goal was to only keep one, and I like them so much. Again, like I always say, 
uh, you see something available, buy it because it may not be available tomorrow. So if you can afford it, take advantage of it. You know, what's another 40 bucks, right? So uh, that's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the straight slim jeans. And I like these jeans because they're kind of a cross between your, uh, your, you know, your skinny jeans without being too tight at the ankle. Uh, if you do wear cowboy boots and you like cowboy boots, um, it's a little bit difficult to bring the skinny jeans over the size of the, uh, the cat area of the boot, right, the upper. Um, so um, you still can do it, but what I, you know, because a lot of the skinny jeans are stretchy, uh, what I prefer to wear is when I'm wearing skinny jeans, I'll wear like a ankle boot instead. Then you still get the cowboy boot look and you still get the look of the skinny jeans without um, a lot of bulge around the calf. And you'll see it even with these, even with these kind of straight um, type of calf, you still, and even with a boot that has a 14 inch opening, where some of them are actually a 15, um, these fit perfect with these. Let me bring the camera down. I know this is pretty, pretty informal, but this is how I do it. So you can see how these look with these jeans. Uh, as far as the sizing, you know, uh, I generally wear 30 inch inseam. Uh, 31 is my optimum, but it's really hard to find jeans in a 31 one inch inseam. And remember, folks, when you're getting pants, it's just really, you know, they're all different across brand and even across the same brand. So it's always great with, a, with, with a, especially a company like Amazon where you can order. Not everything's available through Prime Wardrobe, but Prime Wardrobe allows you to order a bunch of stuff. They send it. They don't charge you for it. They give you the prepaid label in the package. When you get it, if you decide to keep anything, you just log in, click what you're going to keep hit enter and then you put the label on the stuff you're going to return back, send it back in the box and they charge you uh, once uh, once you do that. So uh, you get seven days to try it out, which is great. Make sure you like it. And uh, unfortunately, it causes you to shop more because you can, you know, find really cool stuff right from your home. Hopefully you can see by the video here, I believe this is the one that, yeah, so on this side, you can see how low that strap hangs. It's pretty much touching the carpet. So later today, I'll I'll move that up because you don't want to wear it out, you know, prematurely. Uh, the only downside when you do that, you're going to bring the side strap down a little bit further, but uh, it's better to have it off the ground than than uh, than touching like that. So you can see on this one, it does kind of, what I'll probably do is try to heat press this leather down a little bit. But uh, like I said, not, not the end of the world. It is something, though, that's a little bit disappointing for a brand like Roper to not be consistent. <laughs> Again, here I have another pair. This one is the Sidewander Stings. And you can see they've really tightened this up where this is nice and tight to the boot. This is what you'd expect. Um, it's too bad they didn't do it with these. And we'll see. If it bothers me enough, I got 30 days. I can actually just order a replacement or just order another size, take the strap off and put it on these and send the other ones back. Uh, it's just too bad. They, but, you know, this is what it is with, with quality control nowadays. Um, you know, it just it's across the, all brands. Um, a lot of times it's just not, it's not consistent. Uh, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I will find that the Invicta brand is very consistent. You know, a lot of watch brands, uh, Invicta, Aragon, Bulova, they're pretty consistent with the quality you're going to get. Uh, where with clothing, not so much, you know. But overall, again, these are pretty affordable items. So as far as pricing on these, I got these for 100 and, it was 110. Um, and what I did is, this is what you guys should do too. Uh, again, you know, these are with the insole, they feel exactly like a seven and a half should fit. I mean, there's no uh, reason for me to spend a hundred dollars more on, you know, a seven and a half. These sevens fit perfect. And remember, again, you can kind of fluctuate, um, you know, it, it, especially with boots, because uh, boots are meant to fit like a pair of sneakers. You know, they're, they're meant to not be perfect. And, uh, you know, you can't lace them up pretty much how, you know, how it fits is how it fits. So, um, you, you know, you can kind of play with that a little bit with insoles. So, um, again, what I do is I go through there and just look at what the pricing is. And a lot of times it's pretty crazy. These boots in a 7.5 were 200 These boots in a 7 wide were, one. I think it was 110 actually. Uh, so there was a huge price difference. And I guess probably out maybe with, you know, Amazon's algorithm, they must see what's selling, what's not. And then they, you know, make the price more competitive on the boots that they have a lot more in stock on. That's just an assumption, just a guess. I don't really know. Uh, but... You know, either way, I got a great deal, and I'm pretty happy with them. Let me zoom in. Whoa, buddy, buddy, buddy. That's not what we're looking at. <laughs> Try to get back a little bit here, folks. See it a little bit. And, guys, I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, I wish I had a, a camera guy to do this, but, um, you know, this is when you do your own YouTube stuff. This is what you get, and I refuse to edit. So I want it to be raw. 
uncut, just like we're hanging out talking. Uh, you know, that's how life works. Life isn't isn't edited and, and, and pieced together perfectly. It's messy, and that's that's how I want these videos to come across. So you guys can see my, my authenticity when I'm sharing this stuff with you guys, you know. Pretty great looking boots, though. What I like about these, um, you know, they are that kind of motorcycle, moto, cowboy hybrid. So... Uh, if you're a rider, I mean, this is a great option. I mean, they're not, you know, designed specifically for that, but uh, plus, you know, with the strap, I don't know, you could probably take that off. You don't want to get anything, you know, caught on your clutch or caught on your uh, your foot peg. I, you know, had that happen with laces in the past, so you want to be careful, but uh, they're great looking boots, and that, you know, that's the reason why I get them, and I'm like, man, I gotta keep these now? Uh, because they are so good looking. Uh, they're just fantastic, and I think you guys will really like them. So uh, pricing on these, you know, it's going to range, and I'm going I'm to read you guys the pricing in just a second to give you guys an example. But uh, just so you guys know, when we're talking about the jeans here, let me zoom back out and show you guys the... Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Bear with me, folks. All right, that's better. Um, so you guys can get an idea of the sizing. You know, everything's going to look different on different body types. So again, 176 pounds, five foot seven and a half. These are the Rocket Republic 29 waist by uh, 30 inch inseam. And I ended up buying these in the 32. And you know, I go back and forth. Sometimes I like the pant to kind of come down a little bit lower, but there's only so far it can come down when you have a leg opening like this. You know, if you have a, a rock, uh, rock and revival gene, the leg opening is larger. So the longer length, you're going to get more of the top of the boot, and it's going to hang down closer to the ankle. With something like this, because they're such a straight and more of a, they're closer to a skinny jean, um, you, know, you know, a slim jean uh, is what they are. But they're, I'd say they're closer to like a skinny style fit, but you don't have that really tight taper at the ankle, which again, it kind of depends on mood. I do prefer uh, this. I just think this is more of a, I don't want this to come across the wrong way. I just feel like this, this slim, straight look is a little bit more of a mature look as opposed to, uh, you know, the skinny jean is a little bit more youthful, and I do rock it, I do like it, don't get me wrong, but um, I, I do gravitate a little bit more towards a little more room in the calf, you know, especially again with a, a full-size cowboy boot like this. With the skinny jean, all this gets pressed up, and you start to see like this looks like you're kind of wearing moon boots, so that's why I wear the uh, the ankle boots when it comes to the skinny jeans. But uh, again, 29-inch, uh, 30 inch inseam, 29 inch waist, and this is my point too, when it comes to, you know, if, if you were to try these in a Wrangler jean, which I think these are very similar in look to a couple of the Wranglers that I did try to review, but the fitting in the Wrangler, it just, it's all over the place, and for what you pay for the Wrangler, in my opinion, I know this isn't about jeans, but I just want to mention this, um, in my opinion, when you're looking at jeans like this, I don't think you should really spend more, at least for me, uh, you know, I don't think you're getting any real advantages to spending more money on jeans. Now, I will say Wranglers, they are more purpose-driven. The, the material is really thick on a lot of their brands, and they are more for, like, real work. These are more fashion jeans, right? You can still wear them, but I don't know how they're going to hold up if you were riding a horse. You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, the Wranglers, just they have a much thicker, rougher type of denim uh, in, in all the ones I've tried. Uh, however, the most recent ones I tried, that I, I forget the name of them, but... The sizing is all over the place them too. And what I like about these is that if I were to try to wear a 29 in a Wrangler, there's no way I can get into it, right? With a Wrangler, I almost have to go up to like a 34. With every other brand jean, I'm at a 29. Now, granted, it's not like I'm stretching these out to a 34. I mean, they do, you know, when I unbutton them, and I'm not going to get too personal here, but, you know, there's not, there's just a little bit of stretch to get them buttoned. Um, if I go up in size... What happens is when you start to wear, and these are fresh out of the package, when I start to wear them, like all jeans, they stretch, and then they become baggy looking, and I just don't like that look. So there's kind of a fine line in selecting a jean that fits you properly, and again, when I say fits you properly, fits you properly for your own tastes, your own likes. If, you know, what one person may like, another person is not going to like it. It's common sense. So, um, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Again, not to push the Amazon wardrobe because not everything you're going to buy, not all the sizes that you're looking at are going to be available through Amazon wardrobe. But it is a pretty cool service. It allows you to buy a couple different sizes and try them on. With these, I went with the 30, 32, 29, 32s, 29, 30s. Like the way both of them looked. Sometimes I might want a little bit longer look. I ended up keeping both of them. I'm like, why not just keep them? You like them in, in both sizes, so, um, you know, it's great. Um, what I will say is that I, I have 10... When it comes to this size, 
with the 30 inch inseam. Um, you don't want them to look, and I've seen dudes rocking them kind of rolled up and being kind of more shorter, right? I like them to break right where they're breaking here, but if they shrink, uh, you know, you don't want them to start looking like they're some pedal pushers, you know? So I usually wash them in cold and uh, I, wa I, I dry them on really low heat. And every brand's got to be a little different as far as how much it shrinks. I found old navy jeans shrink up a bunch. So uh, these, not a lot of experience yet, but I'll definitely keep drying them on cool, wash them cold, uh, just to prevent that from happening. Because nothing's worse than getting your perfect set of jeans, it fits great, and then you wash them and it's like, oh man, I needed to get a bigger size. So um, it is what it is. But as far as the boots, like I said, they look great. You probably can't see them now, but um, I think they're fantastic. And uh, I think you guys will really like them. So again, guys, pretty informal video as always. If you guys do have any questions whatsoever, uh, don't hesitate to drop me a comment or drop me an email. I'm always here to help. Uh, link as always is in the description. I'm sure you saw a couple pop-ups in the video here um, uh, for the Amazon link. So check them out. Uh, pricing, I mean, I, don't, I haven't seen as of today anything in the 110 range. They're about 150 up to about 250, so depending on your size. Uh, just to give you guys a quick, quick, uh, keep locking up here. I'll uh, just give you a quick example. Uh, and they have all sizes in these. So you got the, the, you got the regular sizes and then the wides. Uh, seven is 199 in standard. Seven wide is gonna run you 136, so not too bad. Seven and a half, 200. Seven and a half wide. 216, 8, 203, 8 wide, 137. So it seems like that the wides, 209 for the 8.5. Yeah, the wides are definitely going to save you some money. Let's see what the nines are because nine I think is a pretty popular size. Nine is going to be 192, 9 wide, 162. So again, I'm not going to read all of them, but they do have sizes 7 all the way up to. 14 wide. So that's pretty good. Definitely uh, going to be able to find a shoe that's going to fit you. Uh, not Again, not sure what's available with the wardrobe. You'll have to kind of just uh, select the wardrobe and see what, what pops up. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if I can help in any way. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great day and take care.